I grew up in the horse business. My family was involved with horses. We showed cutting horses, reining horses, you name it. And I worked for ranches from California to Alberta. So my background is all horses. And when I, we were at the World Championships in Oklahoma City, 1979, and I walked into Cowboy Hall of Fame. And up, when you walk in there, to this day, the first thing you see is End of the Trail by uh, James Earl Frazier. And it's uh, 18 feet tall. And I saw that, and then I walked into the paintings, and they had two paintings by Ed Boreen. And Ed Boreen was old California who did Vaqueros. And of course, with being a California like me, it has all that heritage in terms of horsemanship. And that was my deal. So that got me thinking, and finally it was to the point, I was 27 years old, and I thought, you know, I better make a decision. Am I going to stick with the horse business, or do I need want to give this a go? So I did. And I apprenticed under two different sculptors for eight years to learn, because I didn't know diddly squat. It was all about horses. Horses, horses. So that's what I do, and the stuff that I know comes from all of that background. You're roughing a piece in, and you're putting this thing together, and it starts to come together. It's great. But you never know if you've accomplished diddly squat until you get that piece in front of people. When you get it in front of people and they start to react, then you know whether you've done anything of consequence or not. There's Every part of this has its own joys, the, from the creating aspect. But ultimately, it's all about that connection you make with those people and with what they do. And if, they, if you get them fired about horses, because you know I can blather on about horses all day long, they start to see just what wonderful animals they really are and how this whole connection between man and horse comes together and what it really means. It's really great. I grew up with all different types of disciplines in terms of Western. And you are able to bring that to the work because you should be able to tell where a cowboy's from by his gear. And an Arizona cowpuncher looks way different than a buckaroo. And I do a lot of buckaroos if I do contemporary work. If I do historic work, the same thing holds true. Your saddles, hats, all that different stuff needs to be articulated properly, but then artistically it has to be competently done. And a horse from 1910 is way different than what we ride today. I... It's seeing the reactions to the, to the pieces and meeting so many great people. And their fire in their gut is about art. And they come here and they go through and they love this stuff. And when you make the connection with them, and for us, it's an awful lot of people that have never been around the horse, but they love the West. And when you start to tell them these things and how uh, everything plugs together, how these horses work, how this story comes together, what it comes from, what, uh, they take a piece of you home and that's what they're doing. And that's what, it's, it's the best thing in the world. So you meet tons of great people, it keeps you pumped up, and it keeps you wanting to create greater art because you can't let them down. Ultimately, you know, they're good enough to, to buy a piece. By golly, I can't let them down. And I wanna be, I'm committed to this stuff getting better and better and better. I have to do that. So there's all of those components. You get to spend time with other artists, which is great. We enjoy that an awful lot. There's great people here, but it's those connections you make here. With, with the collectors that come through, that just, is, it's really wonderful. And it, it's life-changing in terms of your art, it truly is. Thank you.